Hello guys, today we'll be doing the second video lecture in our Abacus series for Finite Element Analysis. As you can see on the screen, this is the same example we've done in class, but we'll be going through it on the video to make sure you guys understand. This is on our second PDF, in case you want to refer to it anytime during the video. So, as always, on Abacus, we will start with selecting the standard explicit model. Now we will pick where we want to save our file to. So file, set work directory, then you can pick your directory. So click the folder icon, and we're going to be saving it to my desktop, so it's easy access. We'll name this folder video lecture, as we already have done, but you can create a new folder in this uh, directory. Okay, okay, and now that it is set where our input file will be saved to. So now we'll be drawing the part. Create part, 2D planar, deformable, wire, and approximate size. Anything, this part is gonna be 0.5 to 0.5, so anything appropriate, as long as we have enough space to build our part. We'll be using two. So here's our grid, and we will now draw the part. However, in the past, we had just drawn the part and dimensioned it, but since we will be changing our input file, It'll be more convenient to use numbers as we'll have whole numbers instead of numbers with several decimal places. First point is at 0, 0, and then our next point, 0 0.5, comma 0, then 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then 0, 0 0.5. We can finish this off now just by clicking because since we already have our points set, the lines will automatically connect to those preset points. Now we have our part. Okay. Next we'll be setting the material we'll be using. For this we'll be using steel, like we did last time, elastic, elastic. The Young's modulus for steel is 200 gigapascals, so e to the ninth. Poisson's ratio, 0.3, as usual. Okay. Now we'll be assigning the sections. Section, beam, truss, continue, cross-sectional area, refer back to the picture. It'll be 0 0.000314 meter squared since there's a one centimeter radius. There you go. Okay. Now our whole part is set with that section. Assign. And click the whole thing. Done. And there you go. Now we have our whole part assigned. Next we'll be creating the instance. Part one, fine. Independent mesh on instance, okay. Now we'll be doing our initial steps, so our boundary conditions and then our loading conditions. For the boundary conditions, we'll be using linear perturbation. Sorry, for the loading conditions. So there's our first step. Now to use our boundary conditions, we go in the initial step, click it, a mechanical, displacement and rotation, continue. If you refer back to our part, there are pin joints on both the top left and the bottom left corners, meaning they are fixed in a certain location but free to rotate. So we will select those points. Now we will set U1 and U2, meaning that it's placement in the X and Y direction, we will set those as fixed, so they are set at zero. Now we'll be setting the loading conditions. So you go to the first step, loads, double click it, and then you pick concentrated force, continue, and you pick the two, the two points, but we're going to be doing them separately because there's two different forces on the two, on the nodes four and three. In the top right corner, we just have a force going in the direction 
of 5,000 to the right. So that's CF1, meaning the concentrated force in the X direction. Okay. And now for the second load, same thing. We have a concentrated force in both the X and the Y direction of 5,000 in the X direction and negative 5,000 in the Y direction since it's acting downwards. Now we will mesh the part. Element type. Now assign the whole part. And there you go. Here we'll pick beam, truss. And change that to the truss since we're going to be using a T2D2 to a D lin two node linear truss. done. Now we have the whole part meshed. Now we will seed it on the whole instance. Approximate global size, remember, to set this it'll fit um, a, a standard number to your size. So if you put a, a huge number it will just give you two nodes per element, one at the beginning and the end. But if you put a smaller number it'll sub put sub nodes throughout the element. Like if we were to do 0 0.02, we'd have that many nodes. But for this, we only need ones at the endpoints. Okay. Now we will go to the mesh on instance. Mesh part. Yes. Now job. Right click it or double click it. Name your job, whichever you'd like to name it. We'll name it in this part of video. Model 1, continue. Full analysis, just don't even change anything for there. Now it's there. And now we can right click this and submit it. Now we wait. It's running. Success. There we go. Right click it, results. All right, let's see the deform shape. And we'll click the colored deform shape too so we can see the stresses. There we go. Also, it's on the left menu to the left. To the left of the chart, we'll show you what you can click. Down, down. That's to change whichever stress you want. And now we're going to label the nodes so you guys can see each one. Options, common, the labels. We're going to want to show the element labels and the node labels. Any color you guys choose, whichever is easiest for you guys. We like these colors, so we'll just leave them as is. Apply. Okay, as you guys can see, this has made a node in the center of the element because that's how Abacus standardly works. However, for our part, for the picture we've shown you, there is supposed to be no node. So we're going to need to go into the input file and change this, as well as renaming each of the elements and the nodes to the numbering system we've used before, shown here. There's one in the top left, two in the bottom left, three in the bottom right and four in the top right and then the number of the elements corresponds to that. The elements are in blue and the nodes were in orange. Alright, now we're going to open up the info file. So go to the folder wherever you set the work directory, click it, go to your .imp file, double click it. Now since this isn't my first time, it might ask you how you'd like to open it up. Make sure you select Notepad, as that's the easiest way to change it. So here's our file. As you can tell, each of our nodes are um, numbered, and each of our elements are also numbered. But we want to change this to match the given problem set. So we're going to go ahead and delete node number 1, since we do not want a node at 0 0.025 and 0 0.025. And we're going to rename the node so we have 
still nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4. So refer back to the picture. So uh, counterclockwise from the top left is 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So that means 1 will be at 0 0.05, then 0. Two will be at zero zero. Three will be at point zero five in the x direction and zero in the y direction. And then number four will be at point zero five in both the x and the y direction. All right. Now we are going to go ahead and renumber our elements to make sure that they match. So again, starting at the bottom and going counterclockwise, we have 1, 2, 3, and then 4 goes from nodes 1 to 3, and 5 goes from nodes 2 to 4. So 2 to 3 is 1, 3 to 4 is 2, 4 to 1 is 3, 1 to 3 is 4, and 2 to 4 is 5. So from 2 to 3, 1, from 3 to 4 is 2. From 4 to 1, or yeah, 4 to 1 is 3, or 1 to 4, either way. Number 4 goes from 1 to 3. Number 5 goes from 2 to 4, or 4 to 2. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. And we'll just go ahead and delete the other two elements. Now we also need to make sure our node sets match up. So right here, we need to adjust these and adjust the boundary conditions. So our first boundary condition, node set 1, which if we go up to, in our first set we have nodes 4 and 5, but since we're going to be using that as a boundary condition, we want uh, nodes 1 and 2. So there you go. Now they're both locked in the x and y directions. Now for our concentrated load, we have been using set 2 for the top right node. So right here, we're going to adjust this from 2 to 4 as is shown in the picture. For load 3, we've been using set 3 and we put a force in the x and y and negative y direction and it's already on the correct node. up here, save as. Instead of updating your file, it's better to just save it as a new file so you don't get confused. So we'll be calling this video underscore one dot imp. Save. And make sure before you save it, you click all files so that it saves as a dot imp file. Otherwise, it might save as a video one dot imp dot text. So always just click all files. Save. All right. Now we'll go back into Abacus. Go to our job, right click, create, and now instead of using the model as our source, we need to go down to source, click input file. Now we'll need to find it using the select button, go, video lecture is already selected, and video underscore one dot imp. Okay, and then we're naming this video two for this job. All right, now we'll submit the job. Submitted, running, completed. All right, now we look at the results. And as you can tell, we now only have the four nodes as listed and then the five elements. Note that the two middle diagonal elements have different labels, but when it is undeformed, it puts it at the midpoint so they were overlapping. That doesn't matter, it's just how we number them. But once it deforms, you can see it kind of pulled them apart. So there we go. And now we're going to do the report. So here's our field output right here. Under report, we want to show the integration points, the stress components, and the S11, since it's a truss, apply. And now we also want to show our nodal displacements. So unique nodal, uncheck that for the nodal. We go down to U, spatial displacements, select U, 
and the magnitude and u1 apply. Okay. Now we can go to our report file, which is abacus.rpt. Double click it. And we can see our stresses. Well, here's our nodal displacements. And then the stresses are shown right up there for the element labels. And if you want to check your work, we'll go slowly through this so you can see. All right. Here are our stresses, and we'll go back down to our nodal displacements. And there you go. As you can tell, 1 and 2 are not supposed to have moved. Um, 1 has a slight movement, but e to the negative 33 is completely negligible. All right, and we'll also upload this file as well to make sure that you guys can check your work. And that will be the end of our second lecture.